we've had quite a few customers call us, you know, and say, hey, man, my, my lawn guy, and I'm, I'm referring to fertilization and weed control now predominantly, you know, uh, as I just the other day one called me up and said, hey, they, I was with True Green. They raised my price 27%. I'm just checking prices. You know, well, well, hell, we priced the job, and we were even a little more than True Green. After we called them back, I was like, well, Jesus, y'all are more than they are. Well, sorry, it just is what it is, you know. I can believe that, though. You know, True Green's buying all their products a little cheaper than we are because they're buying so much more of it, you know. So don't get hung up in that part of the customer care cell of those cancellations and saying, hey, well, I can do it cheaper. I'll, be, I'll meet or beat True Green's price. BS that, man. That's not right. Know what it costs you to do the job. It's, it's always important. But when times get tough, the margins a lot of times will get smaller, so you better know where that break-even point's at for everything that you're doing. I mean, we got creative on some of our pricing this year for Furt and Weed. Something that we've not done in the past, you know? So we got to get creative. We know we want a certain margin. You know you want us when I say we, you as well. We all want to make a profit. But before we can make a profit, we got to understand what the costs are. And again, that's why so many people fell out in 08 is because they didn't understand the business side of their business. They didn't know what they didn't know. And then that customer carousel came around where people, you know, everybody's riding it, you know, like at the fair or whatever, and the music is playing and everything's good as your little horse and buggy goes up and down around the carousel. But then customers begin to hop off because they got to make different choices. They got to make different choices. It's got nothing to do with loyalty or quality of work in many cases. But when everything's changing around them, and as far as expenses, we got to look at that. We got to look at that. You know, how do we fix it? That's what we got to ask ourselves. Well, how are we going to fix it? Why are your customers canceling? Is it really cost? And in this type of economy, it can that can be a legitimate issue. But sometimes it's it's not cost. But let's look at it from it being the cost side of it right now. You know? It's not that you get you've gotten greedy, but what what you need to understand in this type of economy that we may be going into is something my buddy Tom Simpson used to talk about all the time. And he always taught me, he said, Wayne, he said, pigs get fed and hogs get slaughtered. And it took me a minute to understand what he was really saying with that. And Tom came with a, a, ver- a farming background into the lawn and landscape business. and But he told me that quite a few times. He says, man, you got to have to remember, you know, I understand you like to make profit and all that, and so do I, and so does everybody else. But pigs get fed and hogs get slaughtered. So I'm not telling you to change your pricing structure around. I'm just making a suggestion that you really understand what your costs are, where the break-even point is, and none of us want to work for break-even money. I'm not telling you to do that. That would be the dumbest thing in the world to tell you because the need to make a profit is foremost the most important thing we do. But before we can understand our profit margin, we got to understand the cost. You know, the struggles are real, and the struggles are probably going to be real. We've been very fortunate so far. Our cancellations haven't been that great. I mean, we're under 1% right now, which is really good for us. And, uh, I don't know if you're even tracking that or not, but it's something you should be tracking on an annual basis. Um, You know, what your retention rate is or what your cancellation rate is. It's half class, you know, half empty, half full perspective. But, you know, what's your cancellation rate? 
and how many of those people, and you're never going to get 100% accuracy on why they really left, but try to find out if it's cost or if it's service. A lot of times clients on that customer carousel where they're jumping off your service and coming to mine and my customers are getting off my carousel and coming to yours. That's why I call it the carousel. They just hop off one and get on another, you know, but try to figure out what's really causing that change, you know, because what happens is a lot of times, and in my 43 years of experience, I've seen it happen multiple times, that when somebody leaves us and they go to somebody else or they leave us and don't, hire somebody else, you know, they're looking at that yard the first six, seven months, and the, it's still in pretty good shape, you know, because you had it in good shape. It takes a while, as you guys know, for the deterioration to start taking place where, okay, well, we've missed our pre-emergent application. We've missed a couple of weed control applications, and now we're starting to see weeds. We're starting to see crabgrass problems pop in. It takes a while. It's it's not something that they cancel today and their yard looks like hell tomorrow. And that's what we try to explain to them when they get ready to hop off the carousel is that, look, I understand, you know, that you're trying to save some money. I get it. I, I You know, I don't know any of my customers' finances. You know, I know what they tell us. But at the end of the day, I'm not meddling. You know, I don't know anything about what they've got and don't have and, you know, where they're spending their money and what their priorities are. But I do know this, that, and my dad taught me this a long time ago, and this is a, this is a main takeaway for the truth bomb today on the customer carousel. And it goes back to convincing yourself first. But the reality of this is people have money to spend on what they really want to buy. I don't care what the economy is. People have money to spend on what they really want to buy. It's up to you and I as business owners and managers to help them understand why what we offer them is important to them, and what are we really giving them back? What are we really giving them back? We're giving them back their time. Now, for some people, maybe the expenses went up too much, and it really is a thing that, hey, $600 a year or $800 a year, whatever that lawn care program costs them, you know, for those applications. Maybe that is $800 that they can use on food or shoes or whatever. But, you know, if somebody's that close, they probably shouldn't have been utilizing your service anyway. That's how I look at it. You know, I mean, that that's the last place I'm spending my money. If I'm six at seven, eight hundred, a thousand, let's just call it a thousand dollars. If I'm a thousand dollars away from something working or not working and within my budget, man, I, I should have put more thought into that. I should have put more thought into that. So what that goes back to is what niche of customer are you going after? You know, are you going after the value shopper? Are you going after the cost shopper? Who, who are you going after? Because if you're going after the cost shopper, then those are going to be the first ones that hop off that customer carousel every time things get a little bit tight. So from a truth bomb perspective, you got to ask yourself several questions. It's not just, oh, the economy's changing, that's why I'm losing all my customers. you got to ask yourself, do I have the right customers riding the horses on the carousel to begin with?